Uh, hi guys, this is Mr. Rego, and today we're going to prove uh, identities. Okay, so the idea is to prove that the left side is equal to the right side. Again, when, we, when we're doing identities, I can work on the left side, and then I can work on the right side, and at the bottom, they should be equal to each other. Another way is work on the left side until I have the same thing as the right side. Okay? We never do anything to both sides, like plus one, plus one on both sides. No, we never do anything like that. We work on the left side first and then the right side or only one side or both sides, whatever. Okay, but not, you don't mix both sides. Okay, now, uh, today we're working on, on difference of uh, difference of, of angles right now as a cosine function. So my, my identity, so let me write it all right here. So cosine of alpha minus beta is the same as cosine alpha times cosine beta because this is a difference, then I put a plus right here. And then the second part is gonna be sine alpha times sine beta. So I'm gonna use this identity on here in the top. So cosine alpha minus beta is the same as cosine alpha times, so it's the first angle, times cosine of my second angle, which is beta. If here's a minus here, then I put a plus. And I do the same thing with sine. Sine alpha times sine beta. And then originally I have divided by sine alpha times sine beta. And that's equal to whatever you have on the right side. So my idea right now is to work on the left side and hopefully get to the right side. Okay, now I'm a fraction. So I have this thing, I have a denominator and I have two terms on the top. So what happens here is the following. When I have two terms on the top, every term is being divided by my denominator. So that's one. So I'm gonna have cosine alpha times, I'm sorry, cosine beta over sine alpha times sine beta plus and now I'm going to take the second term okay I think that's the whole idea about this uh, problem and I'm going to take the second term let's use black I guess and then this term is going to be divided by my denominator as well okay so I'm going to have sine alpha times sine beta divided by same denominator, sine alpha times sine beta. And as we can notice, this thing is the same thing as bottom, right? The numerator and denominator is the same thing. So when I simplify this, I get a one. All right, now let's look at the left side. I have a cosine alpha over sine alpha. Okay, let's, let's go back to identities. Tangent alpha is the same as sine alpha over cosine alpha. But again, I'm if I'm thinking I have sine over cosine, but right now I have cosine over sine. I have the reciprocal of this. Therefore, I'm going to think about cotangent because cotangent is the reciprocal tangent. Therefore, cotangent is cosine of alpha divided by sine of alpha. So as my function, I have cosine over sine, which means I'm going to have cotangent of alpha but again on the right side the right there let's do it with blue I guess I have cosine beta over sine beta same rules apply only different angle so there's gonna be cotangent of beta so I have cotangent alpha times cotangent of beta plus one equals to the same thing cotangent alpha times cotangent beta plus one. So that's what we use, that's what we try to do. Prove that the both sides are equal, are the same. Okay, all right, let's work, let's work on another one. So now we have this, all right? So we have sine of alpha plus beta times sine of alpha minus beta equals cosine square of beta minus cosine square of alpha, okay? So I'm tending to go on the right on the left side. That's why I wrote my identities on the right side. So my difference of signs is going to be sine alpha minus beta. Alpha is the first angle, beta is the second one. Is equal to 
whenever you whenever you're doing sine or difference or sum of sines, then you're gonna mix your functions. You start with sine alpha times cosine of the second angle, which is beta. You keep the same sine minus, and now you keep the angles. I started with alpha and this beta, the beta, but what I flip, I flip the, the functions. If I did sine cosine, now I'm gonna do cosine sine. All right, so sine, so alpha has sine and cosine, and beta has cosine and sine. All right, so let's do it here. So I need to replace all this. So this is a sum. Same rules apply, but instead of a minus, you're gonna have a plus right here. So I'm gonna have sine cosine, right? So sine alpha, which is the first angle, times cosine of the second angle. Because this is a plus, then I have a plus right here. I keep my angles, I flip my, my function. So it's gonna be cosine of alpha times sine of beta. And this is my first identity. The second one, the same thing, but with a minus. So it's gonna be sine cosine. All right, is minus or minus, then I flip my functions. I'm gonna go ahead and have cosine times sine of beta. All right, equal to this. So my idea is to get all this equal to this. Now, here comes the problem. Okay, now I have all this times all that. But guess what? Because I see in my other side, all the sign is too, 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 too light. Because I see a cosine squared and a cosine squared here, that comes from a multiplication. So somehow I gotta multiply all this. Okay? So uh, let's multiply. Nothing we can do. So first term times first term, right? So I'm gonna have sine, uh, sine alpha times sine alpha is gonna give me sine square of alpha. Cosine beta, cosine beta is gonna give me cosine square of beta, all right? Now the first term times the second one. So I'm gonna keep those together because if you notice, before I start going multiple, you know, like crazy, notice the first term, sine alpha cosine beta is the same as sine alpha cosine beta. Plus and minus, look at the second one. Cosine alpha sine beta, cosine alpha sine beta. So technically this is the, the inverse of, of a difference of squares. So when you when you solve a different squares, let me put a parenthesis over here. When you have a squared minus b squared, when you factor this out, you have a plus b times a minus b. So that's what I see here. I, I see an a plus b, and I see an a minus b. So technically, my middle terms will cancel. So thinking of this, and that I just recognize this, again, this is not probably an answer. I'm just kind of explaining what I see from here. So... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep all this. I'm gonna do, uh, so hold on, this times that. And now I'm multiplying the first term times the last one. So this is positive times negative. It's gonna be negative, negative. So sine alpha, cosine beta, times cosine alpha, sine beta. And now I just did the first and both of them. Now let me take the second one. All right, let me change the color real quick. So let's get red, I guess. Let me take black. Black is uh, black color, black, here we go. So I'm gonna take the second term times the first term. So it's gonna be cosine, the same thing. Cosine alpha, sine beta, they're the same thing. So, uh, so positive times positive is positive. So I'm gonna have cosine alpha, sine beta, times this, the first term, sine alpha, times cosine beta. And now I'm gonna take the second term from here and the second term from here. So positive times negative is gonna give me negative. Let me move that over here in the bottom. And I'm gonna have cosine alpha times cosine alpha. You see, they're the same thing. So I'm gonna cosine alpha squared and then sine beta times sine beta is gonna give me sine squared beta. Okay, now I want you to pay attention to the middle terms, okay? So pretend that we're doing some kind of trinomial, you know, or binomial times a binomial. So look at this, sine alpha cosine beta, sine alpha cosine beta, cosine alpha sine beta, cosine alpha sine beta. So it's like having two times three, and here's like three times two. 
They just flip the order. One is negative, one is positive. Technically, these two terms, one and two, are equal to these one terms, one and two. One is positive, one negative. Therefore, the middle terms will cancel. What do I have left? I have sine square of alpha, cosine square of beta, okay, minus cosine square of alpha times sine square of beta, okay? And now I have to, you know, prove that out to the, to the top. Okay, so let's stop for a second. I have sine alpha squared. I have cosine squared beta. Oh, that I have. Minus cosine squared of alpha times sine squared beta. I have the alpha. I don't have the beta. I, have the, I don't have the sines. So, guys, right now I need to think, how can I get rid of the sines but turn them into cosines? So, the normal, and let me change the color for that, is remembered my identity, my Pythagorean identity. What's my Pythagorean identity? Let me write it over here. So my Pythagorean identity is sine square of alpha, let's just alpha, plus cosine square of alpha equals one. Okay, what am I using this identity for? Because I have sines and I want to turn them into cosines. So let's leave the sine by itself. I'm sorry, in this case I want to Leave the cosine by itself. Now hold on, what am I going to do? I want to I wanna get rid of the sine, so I want to leave the sine by itself. So minus cosine square of alpha minus cosine square of alpha. Okay, cancels. And my sine square of alpha is equal to one minus cosine square alpha. And now I have sine in terms of cosine. I'm going to use this and plug it in here. Again, the reason I left sine by itself is because I don't want sines, I want cosines. So let's replace this instead of sine alpha squared. So sine square of alpha is equal to one minus cosine square of alpha times cosine square of beta. Okay, the same thinking I can do here with sine square of beta. Sine square of beta could be one minus cosine square of alpha. So I have minus cosine square of alpha, sine square of beta would be one minus cosine square of beta. Okay, now what? Let's keep going. Now I have to distribute. I have a, a bunch of cosines. Let's distribute and see what happened. So let me get a pencil here. Now I'm going to distribute that parenthesis. Red. Cosine square times one gives me cosine square beta minus cosine square of alpha times cosine square beta. And that's my first one. Next, negative cosine square times one gives me negative cosine square of alpha. Negative cosine square alpha times negative cosine square beta is negative times negative, give me positive and I have cosine square of alpha times cosine square of beta. Let's observe. I have the cosine square of beta, which is what I'm looking for. I have the cosine square of alpha, which is like what I'm looking for and is negative. Let's look at these terms. Negative cosine square of alpha times cosine square of beta. What about this one? Cosine square of alpha, cosine square of beta. This one is negative, this one is positive. They cancel out. What's my final answer? Cosine square of beta minus cosine square of alpha equals to my original. So I just make a straight line and I'll bring it down. And I have the same thing on both sides. Again, it wasn't clear. It wasn't a clear cut, but one step by at a time. Okay, and we use a couple of identities. This is amazing. You know, this is the main thing. Okay, that was a nice question. Okay, I hope guys you understand this one. Please, if this is helping you, like the, the video, subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot. Uh, we need our channel to, to grow so we can reach more people. All right? Again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care.